stand up on TV, mm. Michael McIntyre's Roadshow, and um, uh, this Edinburgh Comedy Fest show, which is yeah. a lot of you know comics who I don't don't know if they've been mm. on TV before, but I haven't seen them. Yeah. Um, and so the public is getting exposed to more and more stand up that they haven't seen before. So they might start changing their views. Do you think that will have an effect? Yeah, possibly. I think. I think. I think someone like. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, the thing is, I, I see, because I, I don't know, because I don't, I'm not properly sure where I stand on it. I think it's quite good that people who are, you know, aren't white middle class men, aren't, you know, you don't want them to dominate. The fact is, comedy is a little bit dominated by white, not middle class, but middle, lower middle working class men of a certain age in their 30s. But, and, and because, you know, that, that just, but, but also Britain is dominated. But, I mean, comedy is dominated by men which it shouldn't be, I think is, is so much because of uh, the way people are brought up. I know that's, I think, you know, my dad, I'm sure, saw me more as a chatter and a talker socially than my sisters. And that is why there aren't as many women comics, because basically I still think too many, you know, too, too much of society goes, men must do the chatting, even though it's ridiculous in 2010. Men must do the chatting, and women, you know, be pretty and nice and interesting, and not too cutting, and not too, you know, as men are about are all about verbal sparring. And I think it's pure conditioning. But um, and I think it's why you know not so many women go into comedy. But but uh, so I think it's good that, that there is that there is that mix. But um, but I also think you know Michael McIntyre was generally ignored at the Edinburgh Festival, and I remember being there what three years ago, and and people do not respect really I mean whatever people think of Michael McIntyre technically as a comic he's very very good he's very he's great at taking material and 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 getting a lot out of it and he's not yes he's not challenging the state and he's not he's not got a very new style but he's very very good at what he does and somewhere like Edinburgh Festival doesn't respect that Edinburgh Festival goes we want the poets we want the thing we want the cool kids we want the thing um and I think I love the fact that when in interviews he really rants about that he it gets to him I remember in 2007 being in Edinburgh and speaking to a journalist, and I went, "Do you know who the best comic here is? Don't you?" And he went, "Yeah, it's Michael McIntyre." I went, "So why isn't he on the on the uh, Perrier or the Edinburgh Comedy Award shortlist?" And he went, "Well, yeah, that's that's because I think people are always trying to look for something that's brand new in comedy, rather than seeing people who aren't changing the art form particularly, but are excellent at it." It's like I, I think people have a weird view of comedy. I think people should realise that there is great theatre that is just really good theatre, great performances from a play that isn't doing flying people in and you know, isn't doing the whole of Oscar Wilde naked, isn't con constantly reinventing theatre or isn't going, oh, you know, but it's just really good theatre. And I think that's what's a bit disrespected in comedy because when they've, now they've seen it go, they've seen that McIntyre pulls in millions because he is just excellent at what he does rather than going, oh, we need to have someone like this or someone like that. We need to have a, someone that the kids are going to love. Yeah, 18 year olds, are still going to love good comedy from a from a man in his thirties. It doesn't have to be another kid, you know. So, it's, so I think TV, I think TV is a bit stupid about that. I think they are they are trying to tick boxes too much. But um, I don't, I'm going around in circles because I'm in two I'm in two different things of this. I kind of think it shouldn't become the preserve of sort of white middle class men. But I also think that there are that there is that it's too easy to ignore. And people are always looking for something different in comedy, and oh, what's new, and who's, you know, who's jumping on stage wearing an outfit or something, or doing, I don't know. I've got, I've got kids. I've got, uh, I've got two daughters actually, who are lovely. They're, they're the reason I'm quite chubby, by the way. <laughs> the only men do that here. The sympathetic pregnancy thing. You know, my wife was pregnant both times, and I went, "Hooray, we're getting fat together." <laughs> she gives birth, goes back to normal. I'm the fat one. <laughs> And you know it when you put on weight when you're a man. You know it immediately because all your male friends think it's their job to tell you. You walk into a bar and they all go, you fat bastard. <laughs> women aren't like that. Women are lovely. You never get a group of women surrounding the fat girl singing who ate all the pies, do you? <laughs> it's like men. We, men cement our relationships by destroying each other, don't we? We do, so they'll go, you fat bastard, you bald git, you beat those twat. And even have a bad, the guy on the receiving end feels, by law, he has to respond by going, Ray! <laughs> if you are a man and you get that abuse and you don't feel bad, you should be a frontline diplomat for Britain abroad. <laughs> think it would be impossible to offend Britain. It would be on the news, someone going, Hi, uh, today the Iranian government said that the British government were the lapdogs of America, that British men give their sisters syphilis and their mothers are all whores. 
a statement from the British Embassy read, Comedians who try and be shocking, mm. um, and uh, it seems now there's it's quite hard to be shocking because there's so many taboos have been broken. Mm. Um, so, uh, I mean, what, what do you think about the relationship between shock and comedy? Do you think it's a good thing to try and push boundaries in that way? Yeah, I um, I think it is, but I also I also think British audiences are weird because I think British audiences think they're kind of cool for being shocked, and actually it's because you're so uptight that you laugh. I mean, British comedy is so rude because British com people are generally scared of sex. You can go to Holland and do and talk about anal sex and they'll go, yes. British people go, what? He's just said that! He just... So actually, people think they're kind of cool in this country for being... Hey, I, I love it because he speaks the truth. He speaks about, you know, and actually go, you know, and actually going, yeah, are they really saying something that's sub subversive or are they just... Are they just exposing how, uh, you know, uptight you are on these issues? I, that, that, that really bothers me. I, I must admit, I do, but I get annoyed by when comics do that old thing of, oh, do you want, do you want the political stuff or do you want the dirty... We want the knob gags! And you go, that's because you're messed up about sex. That's because you need to desperately... Oh, I, I need to... You know, uh, so... So I can't, that annoys me, but also I love a comic that I love a comic that says things like, "Oh God, that's horrible," but it's still funny. Jim Jeffries, I've watched and thought, "You hate women. You are so funny." <laughs> you know, it's like you got if you're so good, you're being so, and also if you present yourself as vulnerable, it doesn't mean you have to agree with everything the comic says. Um, but I but so so I love that thing of just of of people being so good that they can shock you and make you laugh, but. It is hard to be shocking, and loads of people just aren't that shocking. I think there's, you know, um, I don't know. I, uh, I think, I think, I don't know what there is still to be. I suppose people still can be shocking. They can still, you know, things like race is, you know, it's becoming sort of shocking to be slightly racist in a kind of ironic way. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I've never felt the real need for it. Mine's, my comedy's always been very personal. I'm all about talking about myself, and I have odd bits that I rant about stuff, but I don't. I never think I'm saying anything politically that's going to shock anyone, and I don't. I don't really. <laughs> this sounds so oh god. This sounds so Saturday Night ITV. Uh, but I don't really want to hurt anybody. I don't really like people going. Um, I'm sorry, that's really upset me. I don't really, and I don't think I'm going. Yeah, well, I'm telling you the truth. I actually don't think you are changing anyone's mind. I think what people who think they're shocking. I generally got the people that follow them are the people that they're not going to shock and they're not going to really convert anyway. So I'm, um, yeah, I, that, that sounds so awful. I don't really like, but I, I do, I do hate the thing of having an audience seeing you and people actually getting upset by what you say. Uh, I think you should always make it clear the way where you're coming from. You can say something shocking, but as long as you make it clear or you, or you present yourself as, look, this is just me being an idiot on this. I'm not, you know, but some people also get look to get shocked. You know, some people turn up and go, "You made a joke about cancer, and my dad died of cancer last week." And you go, "I'm sorry, but we're going to make jokes about things that scare us. I'm going to make jokes about terrorism. I'm going to make jokes about diseases. Not going, isn't it a wonderful thing? But you know, just mentioning it, people go, you actually really are.' And you, do you know what? You can't do that because good comedy is always going to be about stuff that's quite near stuff that scares us. Some, you know, I love a joke that presents something that scares us and then makes it better. So. Yeah, do, you think, do you think comedy ever does change people's minds, or can maybe do you think satire can actually affect a political situation? I think so. I think I. Well, I don't know. I don't think it does very often. Do you ever see the day to day? That changed. That's changed the way I've ever looked at journalism. I love it so much. I, I remember watch. You know, I've still watched bits of that and go. I've never quite. You know, it, it just it, for me. It always made it made me look at journalism in a different way. Maybe I, everybody. Maybe that was just because I was being a bit naive, but I just thought, God, it is so tricksy. It is so, you know, and, and they've got such a style, you know, news journalists, uh, news reporters. So I, th I thought that for me was still the best thing I've ever seen that's actually, you know, just such a good um, satire that, I, that, that, that it changed my mind. It will change the way I always viewed something. Um, but I think loads of the time we are just saying things that people agree with you know so much you know and there's going to be so much this with it with the cuts coming with the i think comedy's going to get a bit more political 
Um, but so many comics spout about politics and don't really know what they're talking about. And it makes me annoyed. I mean, I did a degree in politics, but I still... But having said that, I'm not... You know, I. it's just made me more cynical and more like, look, there's always two points of view. And it's very easy. You're being... You're being just as narrow-minded, going, let me tell you about the way that people are going to get hurt by the cut. Yeah, they are, but you know that, you know, there are still nice Tories and there are still horrible um, socialists. And I'm not going to, you know, even though I would say I'm quite a left-wing person, I, I, I just find that kind of real, we're on this team and that team and they're all bastards and all politicians are bastards. And I just, I don't agree with that. I, 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 I tend, whenever I do political stuff at the moment, it always tends to be slightly attacking people and defending politicians, which is not going to be a good career move, I don't think. Because <laughs> I just, I, I get very, I think we get the politicians we deserve, and I think we spend far too much time putting our own issues on them and blaming them for everything, and they're a disgrace, going, well, we're all, we're all faulty, it's just, you know. I don't know. Having said that, I then speak to people, I've done some things at political conference, uh, party conferences, and the aides to politicians do go, no, they don't don't look up to them that much. They are <laughs> they are faulty as well. Yes, they are. They're, they're very um, they're prima donnas apparently. I wouldn't want to run Britain, would you? It's a moany, horrible country. We live in the most incredible wealth and splendour. We have time. We're, we're, we're just we're, we're so looked after compared to ninety five percent of people on the globe. Yet we panic about every tiny thing. Do you remember bird flu? Oh, bird flu. We're all going to die. It's going to go from birds. No, some birds died in Norfolk. Grow up. <laughs> Some of us are a little bit overweight, like me. Apparently I'm part of an obesity epidemic. <laughs> it's not an epidemic, it's not a disease that's catching obesity, is it? I, I, I'd love it to be. I'd love it to go up to skinny people and go, ah, Brilliant, you're infected! Yes! Yes! <laughs> we, do, we, we panic about the tiniest little things. That's what we do. We panic about small things, then big things happen in Britain, and we weirdly enjoy them, don't we? <laughs> Flooding. Flooding, we... <laughs> We're going to love global warming. Every time somewhere floods, somebody's interviewed waist-deep in water in their house going, it's wonderful, it's brought the whole community together. <laughs> your, your house is underwater if we go swimming every day. The, the hard, the, when you first start, it's so exciting to have people applaud you, a joke, laughing, people laughing at you. And <laughs> I think it's why comics are so miserable. I don't think, I don't think people... Oh, the comics are generally such, you know... Um, Lots that with people, you know, people always think of them, isn't it? It's the sad clown thing. And I think you do become that a bit because I think you get so used to laughs, you just remember the bad ones. You just remember the... Everybody was laughing, there was one guy sitting there going... Um, and that's all... That, that really gets you. Um, that, that you don't get as much of a kick. It's like a drug. You can never return to that first gig where people laughed at something that you'd thought up in a, in a room and you went, ah, oh, it's brilliant. You can never recapture it and that's probably why we're so miserable but um but joe you know i i must admit writing i do get i get more excited going that's brilliant um but even i don't know, having said that i do love performing i love i love doing things like mcintyre's roadshow i love doing big two and a half thousand seaters and you know um it is lovely i feel like an athlete always i feel like yeah so you know, you're sort of you really sort of uh I, I, I do love that level of performance, but I mean, I, I gig so much. I'm kind of known for doing lots in one night and things um, that I'm probably, I probably have lost a bit of love for it. But I think, I don't know, it, 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 does, it does depend what, what state I'm at. If I've got lots of new material, I'm loving it much more. If I'm a bit fed up and things aren't working so well or I'm having to do my old stuff, uh, I tend to be more miserable. But I don't know, it's... it's there's nothing like having come across a great joke and going, that will work. That's, there's a moment of when you're just in your little room by yourself.